And we are live on Skills Not Pills Movement with another interview uh, with another amazing expert. I am just so thrilled to be here today. I'm your host, Carrie Hummingbird. And today I'm really delighted to have a very brave and incredible woman with us uh, who has taken her own journey of healing of multiple sclerosis, which, you know, if you know anything about this, it's pretty amazing um, to to you know be cleared of multiple sclerosis. That's that's like a, that's something they tell you. Oh, you'll never be healed of that. Mm -hmm. So Laura Batista is here with us today, and I am really excited to uh, to share her wisdom with you. So her journey has included recovering from. Uh, multiple sclerosis and chronic hives to a place of hope, restoration, and full reversal of ill health. She's rid herself completely of chronic symptoms and the use of pharmaceutical drugs. She has essentially become the person she needed when stuck in the downward spiral of imbalance and disease. Her mission is to educate and shed light on a new way of approaching chronic illness and symptoms in the body. Through integration, self-awareness, and self-empowerment, she helps her clients overcome barriers to healing to actually optimize health. And her practice is called Root Your Radiance. So you can actually uh, find out more about her. I'm um, tagging her. You can look and you can see her um, page in the description. So tell us more about your journey. Tell us, this is like such an amazing thing for so many people to hear because they're like, really, are you sure? Yeah, no, I and, I and I get that a lot. And I want to thank you, first of all, Carrie, for putting this all together and creating this platform for us to share these inspirational tidbits and stories that reversal of ill health is indeed available to us all. Um, so I'll give you a little bit of background of my story and kind of how I got here, and then we'll just let it flow. Um, my story started when I was in my early 20s, probably about 22, 23 uh, 20, 21, 22, and I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. And the way that I kind of started is I woke up one morning and my hands were like this, like my left hand was just like this. Like I couldn't straighten out my fingers without forcing them straight. And, you know, I kind of thought I slept weird or I thought, you know, I didn't know what to think. Um, and then I just kind of brushed it off until it happened again a couple of hours later. And then that's when I started to Get really nervous. Uh, my father's an MD, so I had full access to doctors all over the place. I also worked in administration in uh, in hospitals in New York, very very top hospitals. So again, I had a lot of access. Um, started seeing doctors, getting tests and things like that, and then my diagnosis just uh, kept getting reconfirmed. So the first time they told us we ha I had MS, we got a second opinion. And then it was confirmed again, and then I started the treatment, which was daily injections, um, prednisone to help kind of keep the flare-ups down, which is a very common story for people. A lot of people do um, are, are prescribed prednisone over and over and over again because it's a miracle quick-fix drug in terms of suppressing symptoms. Uh, over time, I, my symptoms were not getting better, and then I developed another autoimmune disease called urticarial vasculitis, aka chronic hives, where I had islands of hives popping up all over my body, and then when I really started to get nervous about it was when they started popping up on my face because there was no more hiding from those symptoms. They were right here. That, that's when I really started to say, well, listen, the, the, like I started to tell myself, like, there's no way that this is the only way. How can I continue to be doing all of the things my doctor's telling me and nothing is, nothing's shifting, nothing's feeling good, nothing's feeling like I'm moving in any sort of positive direction. I'm just like, I'm stuck here in this place where I'm never going to get any better and maybe I won't get any worse if I take drugs. I started with documentaries um, to learn more about myself, my condition. Um, my deficiencies, things like that. And then I started to incorporate green juice into my life. And that was the first skill that I adopted that wasn't a pill. And that was learning how to use food as medicine. This changed my life and changed the severity of my symptoms and the frequency of my exacerbations from just adding this into my, to my life and into my diet. I wasn't really ready to let go of the cigarettes, the alcohol, the stressful lifestyle situations, the food, the gluten, all of the things. I wasn't ready to let go, but I was, I was, I was open to inviting things in. And once that 
that, that just opened like all of these doors. Once I saw how that could change the way I felt, I started to look a little deeper. And then the next thing that I incorporated was turmeric, which is an herb, which we've all heard a lot about. Um, and it works miracles for reducing inflammation. I started taking really high doses, self, totally self-prescribed, um, of turmeric and and I don't recommend people you know kind of do this unless it really feels like it flows for you You do kind of want to work with a healthcare practitioner to guide you. Um, this is just what I did and You know with that again less severity in my symptoms less inflammation less pain overall um, And so the, the skills for me that were not pills really started with education and then implementing some of these things that I felt like kind of okay adding in and then as things as it goes, usually when you start to incorporate like healthy things into your life and they start to work and you start to feel good, then you open up doorways for more things. Um, Deepak Chopra then came into my life and that started my meditation uh, you know, interest. And from there, it just kind of kept spiraling up and up and up versus that down, down, down that I was living on. And then today I am symptom free of multiple sclerosis, no drugs. Um, no Western medicine intervention whatsoever. You will not find me anywhere near a pharmaceutical drug. Not even if I'm like, you know, having severe anything. I had, a, I had a, something I, I was prescribed antibiotics for in you know, a couple of months ago. And I, I did fill the prescription, I will say, to comfort my loved ones. But, you know, I found alternatives in green medicine and a natural approach that cleared it up just as well. So this is what's available to everyone. And I'm so excited that I get to share this with you guys. Well, I am so excited that you are brave enough to come on and do this because I know when we talk privately, one of the big things about um, coming out with a story like this mm -hmm. is that there is all this belief system out in our society that, uh, that once you get something like MS or something like that, like it's never gone. Like right. there's belief that that never changes and sort of like people go, Oh, well, uh, you know, maybe you're symptom free right now, but it'll come back. Right. And there's like this whole, like everyone's just waiting. They just want it to come back. Yeah. And, and they actually challenge you on that. And I know that you've been challenged. Like, oh, can you talk a little bit about how you've been challenged into by that model of like, well, like it, it, you know, it doesn't fit our framework that you can heal from that. So that can't possibly be true. For sure. And I, you know, it's funny, like at this point, I welcome that challenge. I love the challenge because what you'll hear a lot is, oh, well, if you're probably in remission, which means that you still have it. So you still have MS, you're just in remission. Good for you that you're in remission. Um, or, you know, and, and what I say to that is, you know, call it whatever you want. I'm symptom free. And, you know, I don't, I don't need any sort of validation to know what's happening within my own body. Uh, and I've also seen it happen for tons of other people. So I'm not the only one and that in itself validates. And so then you get into the whole thing. Well, oh, that's all anecdotal again, whatever, like if it's, if it's working and if it's happening, I don't, I don't really, you know, I, I use a lot of curse words, so I'm trying to hold myself back, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't really give a crap if it's anecdotal because, you know, one of my very best friends, Dr. Jamie Guyden, who also is involved and she's also involved in skills, not pills. She's reversed her systemic lupus and she's an MD. So, you know, then we have other people all over the place. Kevin Ballister, who's, you know, also, I think on skills, not pills reverses traumatic brain injury. I mean, there are lots of us out there. I think the woman who was on the other day, Tanya also had MS yes. and she's doing great now and it's all through self-love and that is the gateway. Um, and so when you start the, the gateway to healing really is self-love because once you start to really love yourself, you start to question all of these self, these, these doubting beliefs, these, you know, um, things backed by people that are more intimidating or more intelligent or whatever. And there is validity to, to all of that, but this is not just, this is also science-based stuff. This is not stuff. And, and I think that also um, has given me the confidence to come out with this is that there is new science out there that validates everything that's going on in my body. And that's things like epigenetics uh, which tells us that your genes are not a death sentence, you know, and you can control the genetic expression. Bruce Lipton, I've been following him a lot and studying him a lot, tells us that he's a, he's a cell biologist who's been studying genetics his entire career. And he tells us that 
uh, genetics accounts for 1% of the actual expression of disease in your body. The rest of it is all about the environment in which you live, which includes things like the food you eat, the stress that you welcome into your life, um, you know, how long you're willing to sit in a victim seat and continue to take all of this um, stuff happening to you versus, you know, taking a little bit of responsibility and moving forward with things that can really help shift things. And this is not a blame thing. I'm not saying that people are to blame for their diagnosis. I'm not to blame for mine. I didn't know. You don't know what you don't know. So when you're filling your body with Diet Pepsi, pizza, gas station food, I mean, all the things that I used to enjoy and love, um, you don't realize what's happening beneath the surface. But once you do, once you have a diagnosis, once you have this moment, well, it's time for you to take responsibility and invite things into your world um, that promote this upward spiral of health. And then you start to, the other things start to fall away. You know, something that was brought up in the last Skills Not Pills that I loved was um, that you start to let go of, you know, people around you that don't support this new story, right, of healing. And that is exactly what I ended up doing um, just because I, had, I, I no longer could fit that, that type of energy into my world. Um, and so studying bioenergetic medicine, which is really where my focus lies now, and nutrition and you know, principles of Ayurveda and learning about the chakra system and how that's all tied to our organs and glands, these things are so empowering that you can't not feel um, backed by science when you do come out and start to express these stories of, of healing you know, from these diseases that you are incurable. Um, and I, and I'm, and I think that the paradigm is really shifting and we hear that in our world, we kind of hear that all the time, but for those of you who don't, and a paradigm is essentially to define it is uh, a pattern. It's basically a thought around a pattern. Um, and the paradigm of Western medicine is that once you're sick, you're sick forever. And I'm here to lift the veil on that and tell you that that's absolutely not true. Um, and I think that's what we're all kind of here to really support. There's so many of us that have turned into practitioners because of our powerful healing stories. And um, I'm going to continue to shatter from the rooftops because I want everybody to know what's possible. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and I really like when I interview uh, Chinese medicine practitioners, oriental medicine practitioners, you know, Eastern thought, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, I love that when I interview them, they'll often say, listen, we're not we're not against Western medicine. It has its place. Yes. The problem is the place we've put it. Hmm. So we put it as, in this culture. Uh, many of us have placed it as the end all and be all like that's the only path. And that's not appropriate. When we place it at like critical juncture, like got to save my life in the next five minutes. Mm -hmm. That's appropriate. Totally. Very good at that. Very, very good at that. But there's like this whole spectrum of wellness before you even hit that mark that, that you could be paying attention to, which is what we're addressing at Skills Not Pills, mm -hmm. is that whole spectrum. And I love what you're talking about with, uh, you know, oh, I didn't realize that my diet Pepsi with all of the chemicals in it and the pizza and the gas station food and uh, cigarettes and all this was like impacting my health. I think many people don't realize that because the marketing of our, of our society has been like, Coca-Cola, it's what you have at the movie. <laughs> Skinny it's, people drink it and they, yeah. they eat Doritos and it's like, they it's so great. Yeah. yeah. And canola oil is totally fine for you. Yeah. Right. You know, and it's like, no, all these things are not fine for you. They are in fact toxins entering into your body that don't yes. know how to get out. Yeah. And I was, and I was listening to, um, Dr. Karazian, who's this amazing functional medicine practitioner. And, you know, he was talking about Alzheimer's and one of the things that he was talking about is how same thing with, with, you know, bringing it back to where Western medicine shines is in that emergency care or that, you know, life or death kind of situation, or you break a bone or whatever totally shines. But when it comes to chronic illness, you know, very often diseases such as Alzheimer's, for example, is, is not diagnosed until like they're so far along that, you know, there's nothing that can really even be done. And so where chronic, uh, yes, and to bring it back to the Chinese medicine, that's, that's 
that's definitely um, somewhere that I also study and focus. And the unified approach of all of these principles is where it's at. So I study with a, a group called the Unified Medicine Institute, and that's exactly what they do: is they incorporate all of the different med uh, medical models, including Chinese medicine, Ayurveda, Western medicine when it's appropriate. Um, nutrition, homeopathy, herbal medicine, you, you kind of incorporate all of it because it all has its place and it all serves its purpose. And everybody is different by design. No, nobody has the same um, internal blueprint, emotional or physiological, not the exact same thing. So you have to use the right thing for the right person at the right time to move them along a sustainable healing process. And that is also available to everyone. You know, people think that, oh, you know, you can only learn this stuff if you become a practitioner or whatever. I knew a lot of this stuff before I even became, you know, started practicing. And it's just a matter of, of finding the resources and then questioning the ones that don't really land um, so that you can find your own kind of, uh, you can become your own doctor. I, I, this girl, Colette, that I, um, I, I don't know if she's part of this or, any, or but she, she's an amazing uh, no, practitioner as well. Introduce I'll, <laughs> I'll introduce you to her. She's really okay. cool. Um, her thing is all about... Um, like energy and, and, and protecting your energy. She, she does this thing called empath anyway about empaths, but anyway, um, <laughs> that makes sense. That's yeah, <laughs> totally, totally. Yeah. Um, but I'm trying to remember why I even brought Colette into this. Oh my gosh, that's so silly. Anyway, the point is that, um, oh, because she said something that I really liked where she's like, I've become the doctor of me. Mm -hmm. And that is very powerful. And so through this, again, you kind of hear me saying power, empowerment, that is the model that I'm trying to shift toward versus the brokenness model, which does exist in natural medicine as well, that, that kind of looks at what's broken, what's wrong with you, how can I fix you? That's not sustainable because whoever, like you will continue to try to fix this person for their whole life. But if you shift it to an empowerment model where you give people the tools, the skills to nurture their own bodies and then to make their own amazing outcome, well, it's much more sustainable, impactful, and you feel like you're really taking control. Um, the one skill that I wanted to share with people today, which is something that definitely needs to be cultivated over time, is the skill of focusing on the things that you can control versus focusing on how miserable you may feel. When you're <laughs> sick, man, like it's, it's funny. Yeah. I mean, right. Like it's hard to, it's hard to, you know, shake it up or do anything for yourself. Um, and so, you know, whatever you can do in that moment. I mean, I remember there were weeks where I had to take off of work and I couldn't even get up um, because my whole left side would get so weak and numb and heavy that it would feel like my right side of the body was carrying the left. And so in those moments, like, what do you do? You're so in it with your like self pity. And that's part of it. You know, there's, there's no judgment to be cast there. It's definitely part of it to like, you know, feel it all, um, and not to just su suppress it or whatever. But in those moments, even, even allowing yourself to feel it all is practicing control. Um, because then you're conscious of what you're doing. Um, another very easy thing is you feel terrible you can control going to drink a glass of water right now. You know, you go and you drink a glass of water every single time you're feeling really terrible and that crosses your mind. And what that water does, it hydrates your body. It, 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 it creates a flushing of toxins, which is always necessary when it comes to um, being, you know, any sort of ill health, any sort of diagnosis. I mean, with all the toxins we're exposed to on a daily basis, the body needs help. So that's another thing. You control how much water you drink. You can also control the foods that you eat. If you're not prepared to let go of the pizza or the candy or the soda, fine, you'll get there, but start incorporating the leafy greens, start incorporating the, you know, the herbs or, or any little thing that, or the, or the, or the fish oil or the whatever, you know, get advice on what makes sense for you and start incorporating things. It's, it's a concept called crowding out, which I learned at the uh, Institute for Integrative Nutrition that I love because in the beginning, it's really not about oh my God, I can never do the things that are fun. It's more like, well, let me add some more things in to make my life a little more fun. And then those other things just really fall away. They do fall away. The higher your vibration goes, the more you just want good stuff. For sure. And it gets so easier vibrational. to let go of the stuff that is like, that you're addicted to. Yeah. <laughs> but when you feel crappy, it's really hard to let go of the things that you're addicted to. Yeah, it really is. It yeah. is. Because it it's is. a comfort thing. You find comfort in those things. Um, and over time, as, you're, um, as you start to get better and as your body changes, ideally, 
what happens is that you know, you don't rely so much on those things because then you find, you start to rely on the green juice because you're like, oh, you know, that really helped clear up my rash last time, or it really helped my inflammation and my pain. And so then those things become your, um, I don't want to say crutches, but tools, you know, because those, the addictions are the crutch. Um, and addiction is nothing but a lack of connection, a connection with self, connection with others. Um, and not, they're not to be judged. Again, it's not about judgment. Um, but again, you start to, you start to use these things like meditation to calm down instead of, you know, smoking weed or something, or, um, there's so many things that can be done. I mean, I could, I could go on and on, but Which you get the idea. You're an expert in the skills, not pills member. <laughs> ready to launch. <laughs> yeah. So excited about that. I have yeah. a lot of great content for that. I'm, I'm so excited to share. So excited. Yeah. It's like, uh, it's a really exciting time because what we're really doing here is we're, you can see that Laura and I already get it. Like, we're like, yeah, we get this. We're on the yeah. same level. We understand this. And the other experts that are joining in uh, with us for the membership, they all get it too. Like, we're all like, we've already been there, done that. We know. We're like, okay, yeah. It's hard to change on your own. It's hard when you're the yeah. only person and your whole family is like in fear. Like, if you do anything that the doctor doesn't tell you to do, it's like everybody goes into fear. Like, oh, well, you can't do that because yeah. that's not what the doctor is saying. You have to do what the doctor says. You have to do this. But you really need a community that supports you in another pathway. So like, this isn't like diverging. It's more like addition. It's like yeah. bonus material. Like, yes, there's that perspective. And there's also like this other whole spectrum of perspective. And like, I like that you said crowdfunding because a crowd, 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 what did you call it? Crowding? Cra crowding out. Crowding out because this will crowd out that eventually. Yeah, eventually. <laughs> it's, it's the only, the only choice right now is for our medical system, our healthcare system to evolve. It's the it only way evolve. it has to evolve. There's, there's just, there's, it's not sustainable otherwise. And I, and I know I keep using that word, but there's just no better word for it. You know, well, it's not sustainable at people on pills. Like you're creating a dependent. No. What if the factory closes? What are you going to oh. do? Really? I know you're, it's, you're done, you know, so we can't have that happen. You know, we can't have, we don't want to create any dependencies. I, when I work with my clients, that's the first thing I say, I'm not creating a dependency. This mm -hmm. is about empowerment. Yes. And I love that you said that too. That's why we're aligned because we understand it's about empowering each person to find their own path because each person is totally different. Like as you were talking, I was thinking to myself that one person that's out there listening that says, but I eat all the healthy things and I still have this, I still have this immune challenge and I don't understand it because I don't eat anything bad and I'm totally pale, I'm totally, you know, vegan or whatever. And I, I, I shouldn't have this done and that. No, there's something you're missing. We don't know what that is, but there's this whole spectrum to figure it out. Yep. Yeah, for sure. And, and, and there's always room to up level is another thing. Even yeah. me, you know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying like even me, but I've come so, you know, I've come so far. There's no you know. arrogance here either. <laughs> We're all humble. Oh, oh, yeah. But just, <laughs> yeah. I, I just, I've come so far from where I was. And, you know, I think about the people that I hang out with when I was in high school uh, and, and just my lifestyle choices at the time. And they're probably like, who is this chick? And I get that <laughs> actually because I you know I I moved away um, from I'm from New York and so I moved away several years ago when I came to Texas and when I was there most of my friends loved ones whatever knew me as the girl who got sick every once in a while and the girl with MS and so I have um, one, of, one of the guys that I dated for all, all through college um, you know reached out to me kind of recently and was like I can't even believe that this is you. He's like, you were so addicted to sugar. He's like, you were such a sugar addict and you had to have something salty and then something sweet and then smoke the weed and then drink the wine and like all these things. And now it's just, I've been able to ground my body to know how to live in it essentially. Um, and I don't rely on, I mean, don't get me wrong. I still like sweets every now and then, but like my, it, my, my taste buds have changed. It's just, it's a whole different body I'm working with at this point. Um, and a whole different integration of heart, body, and spirit and mind, you know? Um, I don't, I no longer let my thoughts like carry me away, 
Uh, I just, I, I acknowledge them and I honor them. I honor my fears. I honor my symptoms. I have learned to no longer fear my symptoms when I do have them because it's not like I'm totally symptom free. Everybody has, you know, kind of things that pop up, but I know what to do when they pop up. I mean, I'll clarify no MS symptoms. I have not M had MS symptoms in years, probably since I moved, actually, since I moved away from New York and I can, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother, topic. That's a whole nother <laughs> topic, whole nother thing. Sorry, um, <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's, it's just so toxic and there's it just is, there's a emotionally lot of and, and city. environmentally and yeah, New York city. Yeah. Um, love New York. Don't get me wrong. That is, that is love my it home. And, yeah. But yes, but I mean, there's a, there's, there's definitely a connection between getting away from that environment. Um, and then my healing really just kind of snowballing. I mean, it's pretty, In pretty Austin, profound, which is, well, I moved to Houston first. Yeah. Yeah. I moved to Houston first and then I moved to Austin, but yes, it's, but here I got to get in touch with nature and, um, my passions were easier to cultivate because this is such a, you know, health forward city. And I knew that I could grow here professionally and with my education and personally, I may go back to shine that light in New York someday. Um, but we'll see. Um, and there are lots of other people doing it there as well. So, um, overall, I just really want to share and kind of sum up all of that by saying that it really is all about the environment within where your cells live and where you're kind of constantly around. If you have a if you have a body that sustains disease because it's full of toxic chemicals, um, garbagey food, toxic emotions, stress, like all of all of the things that create these kind of sick sick bodies, well then your disease will continue to thrive. But if you put a halt in that mechanism and you start to add in these things that really help and then let those other um, bad bad things fall away, you there's no way that. I'd say most people will not realize um, effective change pretty quickly. It can be very, very powerful, but it takes consistency. This is not an overnight process. There's no quick fix. There's no magic pill. Anybody who's telling you that is full of it. Yeah. Um, but there is a process and there's a way, and there's lots of practitioners out there that feel the same way and follow the same kind of um, thought process. Yeah, and we're gathering at Skills Not Pills because right. <laughs> it's a community and we're all, we all have different perspectives uh, to lend to things. And uh, yeah, so I'm excited to include your expertise in the movement because you've got a very powerful story. You know, here's one last thing I want to talk about, expert. Mm -hmm. What is an expert, Laura? You know, I have a kind of a love-hate relationship with the word expert because <laughs> You know, I think, I think an expert is someone who has lived, lived something and studied something and has applied it and can really say that, you know, they have had success with it um, and helping others have success with it too or sharing with it. But, you know, I definitely think that there's always room to grow and learn in any area. So I think saying an expert is such a final thing. <laughs> That's why I, you know, I have a hard time with the word itself to be a hundred percent transparent, but I think that, you know, we all have, we can only really be an expert of ourselves. I think you can only be an expert of your own body. Um, and that takes a lot of self-love, self-exploration and asking questions, um, and growing your confidence through all of those things and doing those all of the time. So I guess that's my long story, long answer to, um, what's it? No, that is the same answer I, I get from all the other Really? That are joining skills up fields are like, I feel awkward about that word. But you know, so maybe we'll have to change it. So maybe guide or mentor or something like that is a better word. But we'll we'll work on that. And uh, but I think that you'll kind of see like the quality of person that is deciding to be a leader in this movement is the kind of person that realizes, you know, humility is a an important factor. You know, each one of us is on our own journey. And it's a puzzle and it's confusing and there's lots of different pieces <laughs> and it's kind of intentional that way so that you get yeah. to work through the puzzle, you know? So I feel like now that I'm on this side, I see it as like a blessing because I got to find out so much more about myself through exploring that puzzle through all the different things that I did to try to find a solution. So you, same with you. Every time I bring one of these people on like you, I'm like, wow. Like what a journey you took. And that is amazing. And you can be of great service now to other people because you've yeah. embodied that transformation. 
Yeah, I would not change a thing about any of it. I actually think I had it pretty easy when I look at other people's stories, which, you know, is just one of those things that I was kind of raised, you know, to think no matter how bad it is for you, it's always worse for somebody else, which can kind of invalidate sometimes, but it comes from a loving place of, um, you know, everybody has something going on and everybody's got areas to improve. But my, my story, my journey happened that way for a reason. And I am 100% ignited by passion at this point. And really, there's no way I'm not going to continue to spread this message and help people. So I would not have had it any other way. I don't think that if I had gone through, you know, I, I thought about going to medical school and becoming an MD and uh, wait, you know, before this stuff even happened. And now I definitely want to become a naturopathic doctor. But it would have been so different had I not had this experience and I wouldn't have been able to support and um, serve in the way that I'm truly meant to had I not had these experiences. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, well, now if people want to work with you directly, they can work with you uh, at rootyourradiance.com. Yep. R-O-O-T, your radiance.com. And you have a free 15-minute consultation, is that true? It's like a combat compatibility call, essentially. So I won't be, can't be all things to all people. Um, but if we are the right person for one another to work together, we can really walk all the way through a sustainable healing process. And so that 15 minutes is, it serves as kind of time for us to get to know each other a little bit and see how and if I can serve you. If I'm not the right person to serve you, then I will redirect you and or provide you with really powerful, reliable resources. And of course, you can always uh, consider joining the membership. We're about ready to launch it in the next week or so. And you'll see a lot of Laura um, <laughs> in the membership every single month. She's going to be providing skills and DIY and be an expert on some of those calls that are happening every month. So you'll get more time with her directly. So thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing uh, your wisdom and your journey with us today. Thank you so much, Laura, for being you. Thank you so much, Carrie, and for doing all of this and for hosting me. I really appreciate it. And I hope that this serves someone, um, even if just one person, I can kind of inspire that sort of shift in belief that you don't have it in you. You 100% do um, by design and, and, and explore it. Absolutely. And you can go ahead and answer your questions um, down in the chat on this live, and we'll be happy to circle back to them and give you an answer of some kind. Okay. Sure. Love you guys. Love you guys. Bye. Mwah. See you tonight at six o'clock for Serenity Ravenwolf. Ooh. Bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>